Today, we are going to be talking about these, the new Fatshark Dominator digital FPV goggles that are compatible with the Avatar HD system from Walksnail. Today, we're going to concentrate on antennas. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through what my findings are, having had a deep dive into the setup of these goggles on what antennas transmit, what receive, give you some thoughts on what might be the best setup. And I also wanna discuss the fact that these goggles transmit all of the time when they're turned on, just explain a few things around that. Now, if you find this content interesting, please do make sure you are a subscriber and please do give it a like as well. If you'd like to support us to be able to keep making independent content like this, there are links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I would not be able to make content like this without the support of my Patreons. I wanna say a massive thank you to all the people who have donated so far. You have allowed us to be able to buy these products and keep providing the info such as we do in this video. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a closer look at what's going on with the antennas first of all. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is antennas on these goggles because there are a few things you need to know. The new Dominators or the Avatar system, like DJI, have four RP SMA antenna connectors. However, in my tests and in my investigation so far, I've come to the conclusion that actually only one of these is a transmit antenna. Whilst there are four, only one of them appears to have a power amplifier attached and output RF energy. Furthermore, it is worth noting that this unit will output RF at all times once it's booted. So you should make sure that you have antennas on these goggles all of the time they're turned on. On DJI, for instance, they don't actually transmit until the ear unit is turned on. However, that doesn't appear to be the case with this. It is transmitting a carrier all of the time. And again, we will look into that a bit more in depth in another video, but I wanted to make you aware. Now, if we just jump over to the overhead first of all and show you the goggles, you can see at the moment I've got four DJI antennas on here. The way this is set up is the antennas are labeled ports one, two, three, and four. Internally, Port one is this antenna here, which is top right. Port two is top left. Port three is front right. And port four is front left. Of them, port one is the only antenna that appears to have a power amplifier on board and transmits, and that is this antenna here. So with regards to this system getting the best possible performance, you may want to consider putting a patch antenna on port one and not necessarily just on port three and four. Now, just to explain what I mean about that single power amplifier, here is one of the images that's been shared by one of the fantastic guys over on the FPV.WTF group. And he's actually done a full tear down and shown that. And I'll be talking about that a little bit more in another video as I tear mine down as well. But here you can actually see the inside of the goggles. And we have here the four UFL connectors for the antenna. So if I zoom out, we have our antenna one, antenna two, antenna four and antenna, sorry, antenna three and antenna four. Now, if we look at these, here are two of the RF transceiver chips for the system. Again, we'll look at that in more detail a little bit later. And you can see here that this RF transceiver goes to this small IC here, then to the antenna three. On this side of it, because there's two antennas per transceiver, goes again to this small IC here, to antenna four. Then on the first chip, we've got on this side, again, goes through this little chip to antenna two, but this one goes to this chip and down to antenna one. Now, looking in closer, I've done some investigations on these chipsets, and this is a Skyworks power amplifier, basically the same power amplifier that we find in the DJI FPV systems that is linked up to port antenna one. However, these are Skyworks chipsets, but at the moment I can't find any evidence to suggest that they are power amplifiers and they actually appear to be just receiving amplifiers on the input of the system. Based on this, 
I've actually done tests on the goggles with my Spectrum Analyzer, and that also shows that this antenna, port one, top right, is the only one outputting RF on the system. I am still investigating this at the moment, but I wanted to share this with you guys up front, and it does seem that there's a setup of three antennas receiving and four transmitting. The one last thing I just want to show you is that power on behavior on the screen. Now, what I've got is my spectrum analyzer in the background. You can see it there. It's currently set to 5.7 gigs, 5740 exactly. And in the top right corner, you can see the HDMI input from the avatar goggles that are here. So what I'm going to do is power them on and you will then see that carrier kick in. So I'm going to hit the power button. The goggles should boot up and in a second you should see the HDMI kick in on the display once the goggles have actually powered up and then I'll actually show you what that behavior looks like. Now it's worth noting that that HDMI output doesn't kick in straight away. It takes a second or two to kick in from when you power the goggles on. There you can see that the carrier came and went and then it's come on strong. If I now just pick the goggles up into the menus you can see that whilst I'm not connected to a VTX at this point, because I don't currently have one, it is still outputting RF energy. If I change the channel that we're currently on, so if I move up to channel two and select it, you can see that it's moved further up the band. So if I now scroll up the band with the frequency and bring that to there, you can see it's there. If I move then to channel three, you can see it's moved again, moving it up. And then if I go back to channel one, click on that. Actually, I didn't select that. Go back to channel one, select that. You can see that it has moved down. And there you can see that carrier. Now, as for the frequency of the carrier, it sits just below the top end of the frequency range on the goggles. So on channel one, the range is 5725 to 5745. And that carrier is basically on 5740 center frequency. The size of the carrier is about five megs wide. So if I just grab it there, 4.7. So if we go in total, it's about a five megahertz carrier on the band. But as I've said, the thing to understand is it is there all of the time when you power the goggles up, regardless of if there's a VTX connected or not. Okay, so that's pretty much it on this one. Now, I do need to do a lot more testing on what the behavior of this system is when it's connected to a VTX. We will be doing that in a future video. Please do make sure, as I've said, you are subscribed if you do want to see that. I'll be doing a deep dive into the RF system as well and try to explain some of the quirks and behavior like we did on DJI 2 with the Spectrum Analyzer and hopefully provide you the kind of info that you may not get anywhere else. Overall, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. As I've said, if you'd like to support us, please do check out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee and I will speak to you again soon.